This is Rosie Lalonde, and I would like to welcome you to Enhancing Your Flower Images in Photoshop. Welcome to another lesson in our series, The Joy of Flower Photography. In this lesson, I will be teaching you about masks, whereby you can learn a very important key to being successful in using Photoshop to perfect and enhance your flower images. Learning and understanding masks will also prepare you to be successful in adding textures to your flower images. In the first part of this video, I will demonstrate the theory of masks in a very simple step-by-step -step process. Then, we will look at how to use this theory in a real-life example with a flower image. I'm starting here with an image that has two layers. The bottom layer is a red layer. The top layer is blue layer. Now, one of the reasons that you would use a mask is to be able to take some of this blue layer and poke holes through it, if you will, so that you could see the red layer. That's easily done by adding a white mask, which is the default type of mask. At the bottom of our layers palette, we're going to click on the Add Layer Mask icon, and when we do that, you can see that we've added what looks like another white layer on our blue layer. In fact, this white layer is a mask. That means that if I were to have black paint on a brush, I could paint with black and I would be poking a hole through this blue layer so that I'm revealing the red layer below. Let's do this in another way. Let's say I want to draw a face. So I've made this little smiley face by using black paint on my white mask. That has effectively poked holes in this mask. If you remember the little rhyme, black conceals, white reveals. So what the black is concealing on this blue layer are these areas that I've painted in black. So again, let's look at it. We've drawn a little face. We've used black paint on a white mask. That black paint is concealing the blue, allowing the red layer below to show through. Let's remove this mask and let's talk about a black mask. Now a black mask is obtained by holding down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on the Mac as we click Add Layer Mask icon now you can see I have a black mask and it is completely hidden the blue layer. So if I change my paint from black to white and I make the same face, I can see that the white is now allowing the blue paint to be revealed on top of the red layer. So looking at our mask, Black conceals and white reveals. So the black mask has concealed the blue layer, except for the place where I've painted with white. White is revealing the blue layer just in these specific places so that I can see the blue on top of the red layer. Now that we've seen how masks work in theory, let's apply what we've learned to this pink this image has two layers. My original, which has been perfected for color and exposure in Adobe Camera Raw, and the second layer, I duplicated my background layer and changed the blend mode to darker. In my next lesson, I will demonstrate how to use the blend modes in Photoshop. But for now, it is safe to say that I just have a darker layer on top of the layer that I brought in from Adobe Camera Raw. As we look at the darker version, even though I've reduced the opacity, it is overall too dark. So I'm going to add a layer mask. 
I'm going to click on the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers palette. This is going to put a white mask on my darker layer. And using black paint with a very soft brush, I'm going to mask the darker area only where I want the background to show through. I'm not looking to reveal the entire layer below, nor am I looking to work with my black brush at 100% opacity. I just want the center of my image to be lighter. If we look at just the mask, you can see where I've painted with black. The darker layer is being concealed where I've painted with black. That allows the background layer to show through. This is without the layer mask, and that is with the layer mask. Another way to do this, yet get the same results, is to use a black mask on the darker layer. Making sure that my darker layer is selected, hold down the Alt key on PC or the Option key on Mac while clicking on the Add Layer Mask icon, I will get a black mask. As you can see, the entire darker layer has been concealed by this black mask. So, using white paint, on a very soft brush, I can reveal the darker portion of the image only where I want it to show. I'm going to get a much larger brush and I am going to begin to paint around the edges of my image, working my way in and not painting where I want the white from the layer below to show through. Here's the mask. Before, after, before, after. It is important to note you can only use a layer mask if there is an image on the layer below. Depending on what type of mask we use, it will interact with the layer below. Another important note is that I have referred to using a very soft brush. If you have not watched the video on how to use brushes in Photoshop, it is very important that you do that before you continue on any further. Learning to create hard or soft brushes is paramount to your success in using layer masks. Now that I have taught you how to use two different types of masks in Photoshop, I'm going to demonstrate how to use two photos on two different layers for easy distraction removal. I was on a photo shoot with Nancy Flachilla, and when I was reviewing her images, I could see Nancy loved this one image, but was not looking forward to the task of removing all of the distractions necessary to perfect it. As I continued to review her images, there was an image Nancy was going to trash because the flower was out of focus. But looking at the background on that image, I saw an opportunity to borrow its background and use it with the first image to cover up most, if not all, of the distraction. To prove my theory, I took both images into Photoshop and laid one on top of the other, and lowering the opacity of the top layer, I could see they were a great fit, and this option for removing distractions was going to work very well. Here are both of the images in Adobe Camera Raw. Make no mistake, if you are going to use this technique, both images must be corrected for color and exposure in a way that ensures a close match to each other. However, because these two photos were shot with the same camera, the same lens, under the same lighting conditions, and on the same day, this was an easy task. Once the color and exposure of both images were at their very best, I made sure both images were selected and I opened them in Photoshop. This is a good time to note that if you open more than one image in Photoshop CC, the default is to put each image on its own tab. 
And since that is a very easy way to view and work with more than one open image, I have always left that as the default setting in Photoshop. As you can see, I have two Photoshop tabs and clicking on the file name in the tab, I can view each image simply by clicking on the tab. I want to use the image that Nancy was going to trash on top of the image I want to perfect. So I'm going to select the tab with the image I want to duplicate. Once the image is open and active, I will right click on the background layer and choose Duplicate Layer. As a note, always be sure to right click on the layer name as opposed to clicking on the layer's icon image. If you click anywhere near the layer's icon image, you will not get the same drop down menu and you will not find duplicate image. Photoshop now wants to know where I want to put this duplicated layer and it will open a dialog box and allow me to make a choice for the destination file. I will click on the drop down disclosure triangle and choose the name of the image where I want to add this layer. In this case, the document name is underscore NCF3235. Once I have chosen the destination document, I will click OK. At this point, I am done using the currently active image, so I'm going to close it. Photoshop will now show me the second document, which has two layers. The original image, which is the background layer at the very bottom, and the duplicated image, which is the second layer. Removing the visibility icon from the top layer allows me to see the background layer. The easiest way to remove the distractions from the bottom layer is to put a reverse mask on the top layer. Before you begin, it is important that you do not click on the layers, as that will change the active layer. As you can see, my top layer is active and that's exactly the way it has to be for this operation to work. So, with this top layer active, I will hold down the Alt key on PC or the Option key on Mac while I click on the New Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers palette, and this will put a reverse mask on the top layer, completely blocking it from view. I now need to get a soft white brush and size it so that it is fairly small. Seeing that my foreground color is set to black, I need to touch the letter X on my keyboard to exchange or swap the background and foreground colors. Now my foreground color is white and I can touch the letter B for brush and go to the HUD or the Heads Up Display to review my brush settings. My opacity is set to 30%, my flow to 54%, and smoothing is set to zero. These are absolutely perfect settings for what I'm trying to do. I also want to check the feather on my brush, so I'm going to open my brush settings palette to ensure that my feather is set to about 5%. Finally, I will use my left and right bracket keys to size my brush accordingly. I will now begin to paint on the mask to start the distraction removal process. What you need to understand at this point is that as I make brush strokes and paint with white on this black mask, I will be revealing the portion of the top image in the areas that I will paint. And what I am revealing from the top layer will be masking the distraction on the layer below.
As I move to the bottom right of this image, I'm going to reduce the size of my brush even more so that I can get into this rather small area without painting over anything that does not need to be removed. If I were to make a mistake and go too far, I can change the color of my brush back to black by touching the letter X on my keyboard. And with a black brush, I can paint over the area where I have removed too much information and paint back in the information that was there before. Remember to touch the letter X on your keyboard before you want to continue your distraction removal. Now that I've completed the majority of the distraction removal, I can see that I have too much headroom at the top of my image, so I'm going to crop this image. I'm not going to use a crop ratio, but I'm going to use the rule of thirds grid to obtain a pleasing composition while removing the remainder of the distraction in the lower left portion of the image. When I'm done with the crop, I will click the check mark on the HUD at the top of the window to commit the crop. And I must say, I'm very happy with the ease of this distraction removal and the overall outcome of this image. I'm going to stop here with this image, but you will see this image again in a future video where I will perform additional distraction removal and enhancements. Thank you so much for purchasing this on-demand video. The skills I have demonstrated in this video should be very easy to follow, and I have every confidence that if you will practice what I have taught, your Photoshop enhancement skills will reach a new level of excellence sooner than you can imagine.